I was just some crazy guy talking about something that didn't even exist. For a solar micronova, any micronova doesn't exist, they said. This was what they said when I when I was doing this in 2019. And my response was, well, hey, look, you kind of had this, we know everything about stars, we know everything about Nova events attitude back in 2010, back in 2000. And since that time, you keep coming up with new kinds of Nova, new kinds of Nova. Oh, it's a, not a new kind of Nova, but this is the first time we've seen this kind of star do it. We thought that was impossible. Okay, now we have to open the door for this kind of star to do this kind of Nova. And it's been nothing but that expansion and expansion of how many different kinds of Nova there are and the different kinds of stars that are capable of making them. We are at the point now where to simply say they don't know Nova is the understatement of the century. Fast forward to 2022, April 2022 to be exact, and the famous story. Scientists, so genius of them, they have discovered a micronova event in space. But the way they did it, oof, it wasn't my version. They did find a brand new kind of nova, another one by the way. And we're looking at averaging a new kind of Nova every 10 months. Okay. This is not a field that they fully understand by any stretch of the imagination. And so they come up with Micronova and it's just a completely different thing. Oh, it, it requires accretion from a binary. It has to be a white dwarf star and it's not a total spherical outward blast it's just on one part and it's almost like a super flare and cme that goes out but of course the problem was that they kept seeing them over and over again and including some stars that weren't white dwarfs and including some that they're trying to classify as oh well maybe this is a dwarf nova maybe this is something else but by all data it looks like this should be a micronova why aren't you calling it a micronova oh it's not a white dwarf star and so therefore it violates your rules i understand completely even though it falls completely within the energy range the duration of dip to rise to peak to fall off in brightness uh, all fit the micronova but it's not what you think it should be so um you're going to call it something else uh, this has been happening over and over again. And when you further understand that you need to explain the Nova level isotopes in the geology, when you have these layers where we have all of the extra bones signifying, wow, there was a lot more death in this little sedimentation here. When the magnetite goes the other way, suggesting that, hey, wait a minute, at that exact same time, Earth's magnetic field did one of these. When you have indisputable changes in the lows from that same area showing, wow, the climate really changed all across the world at that same time. When the ash tells you that, wow, volcanoes and wildfires upticked worldwide at this time, when you can go other places and find that there are craters that match these same layers in terms of their age, these Nova level isotopes, they are locked into the fossils. They are locked into the glass microtectites. They are locked into the petrified wood. And the only way to make them is with a Nova. We have gone over many, many times the evidence of how this is present and needs to be explained and how this can't be any other star. It has to be a recurrent miniature, in my words, micronova from the sun. We've gone over it up and down. Not only the evidence suggesting that's the case and the fact that the world of astronomy, every time they discover something new, they just inch a tiny little bit closer to the crazy guy. In addition to that, think about the galactic current sheet being what we have said was the only possible thing that could explain this cyclical magnetic change throughout our solar system that we now know is throughout the solar system because we can see it happening. But definitively here on Earth, it happens over and over again, pretty regularly on a cycle. And the core of it is the magnetic change and likely everything else results from the magnetic changes that we see. We also were able to figure out that not only is there this thing that 
they know exists in the Milky Way and in other galaxies in which they have actually characterized. They know the wave height. They know the thickness of it here in the Milky Way. We're not like hypothesizing here. This is what exists. By the way, when the sun's version, the heliospheric current sheet hits Earth, it causes a global geomagnetic disruption, just like the galactic current sheet when it hits the solar system causes an entire solar system magnetic disruption. This is the disaster cycle. And we have seen nothing but confirmatory study after confirmatory study after confirmatory study. And I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to share my screen once again, because holy crap, I honest to God can't believe this is how we are ending the year. We're starting with one of the first ever theses that includes the study of Micronova. And most importantly, most most importantly, when they're talking about micronova bursts, one of them undergoing transient behavior of pole flipping, which began shortly prior to the burst. Here's the problem with that. There is no pole flipping possible in the mainstream mechanism of a micronova. It's just the accretion, the accretion, the accretion, and then the star goes, Achoo! There, there's no pole flipping. There is in my version, but not in the mainstream version. Well, that's interesting. But of course, it gets even better because then we had this. They're trying to figure out how Earth's magnetic field could be so well-timed with these magnetic changes. A beautiful thing to see recognized in the papers, by the way. Hold on. Let me, let me make myself bigger so you can see me. Hi. So uh, what a wonderful thing to see the recognition. That, hey, wait a minute. The Earth like has a, a magnetic disaster clock. How? Why? Why would that make sense? Oh, well, the modification being the modification of Earth's magnetic state being calm and stable to not so calm and very, very unstable, incorporates the hypothesis that the geodynamo is influenced by the weak interstellar magnetic fields found in the local interstellar cloud, aka the galactic magnetic fields. Their results, and they're talking about their mathematical modeling, show that when the modified Rikitaki model is driven by an external current whose sign changes are synchronized, with real paleomagnetic data, the model successfully reproduces the timing of the geomagnetic reversals, supporting the hypothesis of external control of the geodynamo. That was external control of the geodynamo. Essentially, as the current sheet fl slowly flips the magnetic field, reverses the magnetic field of our surrounding environment, it imposes the magnetic pull flip on all of the items inside of that. That is what is happening. But now here's the interesting thing. That's why we're seeing all of this stuff happening to the other planets, right? We have gone over the fact that there are two ways to create a nova, right? Either there's the accretion or there's the powerful magnetic kick. And the galactic current sheet brings extra dust extra neutrals and represents the magnetic reversal of the galaxy. That's that's a magnetic kick and accretion. The two Nova triggers delivered at the exact same time in a way that would explain all the geologic evidence in a way that would explain why our ancestors were terrified of the sun. Oof, that's a lot. And it just so happens that as the interstellar or galactic magnetic fields are reversing, they will not only impart that magnetic flip on the earth, but they will do so on the sun as well. And so not only is there going to be accretion, not only is there the magnetic kick, but there will be the pole flipping on the sun, which will begin shortly prior to the micronova. <laughs>